to those that are citizens of the kingdom of the Almighty God. Grace and peace be unto you on behalf of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to begin with a prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is written in the scriptures that the letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. We pray, God, as we have a conversation and as we read the scriptures, that your Holy Spirit will take hold of our heart and give us an understanding, Father, that we may also have the word in our heart as written by the psalmist King David, hidden in our heart, that we will not sin against you. We bless your name this day. We thank you for another day in this realm where we live to glorify Jesus Christ. Blessed be his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today's message is called Wake Up Call. The Wake Up Call. And we're going to go into different topics, but it's all going to tie in together so that you can have an understanding and so that the church could be edified and we can all, including myself, walk in obedience to the Most High God. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. This picture that you see on the screen, some of you may not have used this phone and some of you may be of the age when you saw this phone and you were able to experience this. Once again, this message is called the wake up call. And if you were around and you got to use this phone, congratulations. You've been here long enough to see the great changes taken in society and technology. And you know that we are in the end times. So this phone right here, one would put their finger inside of the slot of the number that they want to dial and then move the disc, slide the disc all the way to the right and then remove the finger and then the disc would automatically slide back and then punch in the next number and slide it all the way to the right. That's called a rotary phone. And the whole time it would make this this noise, this pulsating noise. And look at how far technology has come where this is not used anymore. So this message is called the wake up call to the church. First, I wanted to start by saying that the Apostle Paul, and for that matter, all the apostles in the scriptures are far greater than I am and far greater than you, the listener. They labored greatly for the Lord. They died to self daily and truly. And the 12 disciples, for the most part, they walked with the Lord when he was in the flesh here. As we all know, the Apostle Paul became his disciple later on. Glory be to God for the writings that the Holy Spirit has through the Apostle Paul because he addressed most of the issues in the church. And the reason why I bring him up is because we're going to go through some scriptures uh, that he wrote in particular and what they meant. See, Paul states in scripture, he says, pray for me. And rightfully so, because the Apostle Paul also wrote, pray without ceasing. That means don't stop praying. Don't stop having that communion with God. So when a leader, in this case Paul, and every other leader says to pray for them, pray for them because it is very important. And it is with this that I wanted to start the message with the prayers. And there's a problem that's going on in the church right now. And I'm sure that it has been going on since times of old, but more so now. And here's the problem that's going on in the church. 
let's say I'm going to use numbers for the sake of the example so that you can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So when I refer to a person, I'll refer to that person as person number one and person number two. That way you'll know I'm speaking about different people. Believer number one, believer number two. So a believer, believer number one, would come to believer number two. And here's the problem. I'm going to describe the problem. Believer number one would come to believer number two and say, I'm going through this, or I have such and such infirmity. Pray for me. And believer number two would say, okay, let's pray. I'm going to pray for you concerning your infirmity, concerning your situation, whatever the case is. And believer number two would pray. But believer number one failed to say what's really going on. You see? Believer number one failed to say that he incurred in sin. And that that infirmity or that situation that that believer is going through, believer number one who requested prayer, is actually a consequence of the sin. You see? We're going to be going through these scriptures. So, when someone incurs in sin, they open the door to the demonic. They also are open for the correction from the Lord. And at times, the believer, believer number one, does not understand that you cannot violate, you cannot willfully sin. Because remember, the wages of sin is what? Is death. So the Lord brings the rod of correction, and here is this believer asking for prayer. Not even confessing to believer number two that he has sinned, but yet painting himself as a victim, as, oh, this happened, basically out of nowhere. And this is a problem in the church. So if you're listening to this message, are you being a hypocrite? Are you asking for prayers while you are willfully sinning? Why don't you confess your sin to your brother or sister? Just to give you an example. A person may come and say, oh, pray for me. And I am not speaking this out over myself. I'm using this as an example. Pray for me. For I perceive or I have lung cancer. Please pray that the lung cancer will go away. Yet the person requesting prayer is a smoker and smokes and continues to smoke. They want prayer for the lung cancer to go away. But not only are they smoking, they have no plans. Believer number one has no plans of quitting the cigarette. Yet they're asking for prayer that the Lord will heal them concerning the lung cancer. Do you see the problem here? That's a huge problem. Believer number one should have integrity. And say, hey, listen, I smoke cigarettes and now I have lung cancer. Do you mind praying for me that the Lord will heal me? And oh, by the way, I don't plan on stopping smoking. Because guess what? Maybe that believer needs a another wake up call. See, there's certain wake up calls that occur so that the person changes and the whole wake-up call terminology, think about this. When a person goes to a hotel, now they have Airbnbs and all this other stuff. But before there were hotels, there still are, but a person would call the front desk or contact the front desk using the hotel phone and say, give me a wake-up call because they have plans to do something. So usually the person in the front desk writes down the time and the room number 
and we'll call that person in the morning as a wake up call so that that person can engage in their commitment in their plans throughout the day and the purpose of the wake up call is for the person not to remain sleeping because if that person remains sleeping then they will miss the responsibilities that they have throughout the day so this is why they have a wake up call so we're going to get more into this, these understandings and these examples because if someone is a smoker smoking cigarettes like a bat you know smoke a few boxes a day and now this person has cancer it would be of much integrity if this person stops and says you know what I'm gonna answer this wake-up call and stop this sin before the Lord and request prayer and when this person requests prayer it would show great integrity if that person confesses and says you know what I brought this upon myself because I smoked a lot of cigarettes I plan to smoke I have stopped please pray that the Lord will have mercy and have this cancer rescinded and eliminate and heal me completely because I don't want to sin anymore see that's confessing the sin right there and requesting prayer but what we have now is believers going to other believers hey this is happening to me yet the night before they masturbated they incurred in sexual immorality whoremonging the believer fornicated committed adultery and here they are suffering the consequences of their action requesting prayer and not even confessing what they have done you see the problem with this the Lord is not picking on you you are willfully sinning so this goes for you <clears throat> let's say you're dipping tobacco you like to dip tobacco don't request prayer quit the tobacco first let's say you're smoking you smoke a pack or it's only once in a while every Friday every Saturday before you request prayer stop if you drink right you're a drinker you like your alcohol don't be requesting prayer because at that point you're just making the matter worse for yourself it's like you're laughing in God's face you see you're not taking it serious some people listen even if you don't have the willpower to leave the bad habit guess who can give it to you guess who has it Jesus Christ but you have to want no association with the wickedness you have no to want to not sin against the Lord and cry out to him and he'll break the yoke off of you but while you're comfortable in your sin please don't be asking for prayers because this is very hypocritical and again you're making matters worse for yourself there are cases where believers have masturbated and the end that they're asking for help have fornicated asking for help at the end of the day is one of those things where the right prayer would be I pray that God brings something very se severe upon you to realize your sin to have you to help you turn from your wicked ways and until you turn from your wicked ways my prayer is that something more severe comes upon your life that you will realize what you are doing and turn away from this wicked sin and when you forsake the sin I pray that you may be rewarded that's a that's a good prayer don't be praying for people to be healed first ask are they in sin don't be praying for people for the Lord to bless them financially with situations first ask hey how's your walk with the Lord are you watching pornography are you smoking have you been drinking are you watching worldly movies are you listening to worldly music see some people need a wake-up call and I gotta tell you sometimes right nowadays 
people have cell phones. So that wake up call with the hotel, for the most part, it doesn't happen anymore because people would set their alarm on their phone. And if you're one of those, how many times do you hit the snooze button and remain sleeping? At times, if a person has a drastic wake up call, that'll do it to get them out of bed. That'll do it. I got to tell you, if the per- if a person gets kicked out of bed, smote out of bed, or let's say a roommate comes with a bucket of ice cold water just to get the point across. Now, is the person who woke up, are they going to be upset? Yeah, they're going to be upset, but they, they're going to get up. You see, so do not force the hand of the Lord with these wake up calls because if you're not getting up you may need something a little more drastic for you to answer this wake up call and it is truly a blessing to answer the wake up call from the most high God because I do tell you that at times the ringtone can sink right in and the person just hits the snooze button and makes an effort to go back to sleep knowing that there's responsibility. What a great responsibility has the Most High God given us that at times he may wake us up in the middle of the night to pray. Are you getting up or are you going back to sleep? How important is the kingdom of God to you? I say answer the call and get up. Because as we're going to see in a little bit, the prayer of the of the righteous availeth much. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to those of you who are in the Lord, I do tell you that at times, uh, something that the Lord has shown me that I've been guilty of, which I repent, it is that how is it that we would set an alarm or set a call or something that I did was I said, you know what? Once I break my fast, right? I'm going to set the alarm at midnight after the midnight hour or after a certain hour to which I made the covenant with the Lord to be fasting up until a certain time. Once it hits that time, I'm going to set my alarm clock after midnight that I could prepare myself some food and, and eat because I so look forward to eating after a fast. Just thinking about the food mouth watering I tell you so then the thought came to me glory be to God do I set my alarm to get up and pray the answer is no I don't do I set my alarm to do the things of God no I don't yet here I am setting up an alarm to go and eat It's not right. The correct thing would be to be even more diligent when it comes to the things of the Most High God. You see? So, we're going to dive into the Word. And I'm going to be putting the scriptures up on the screen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to read from the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. In Jesus' name, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Nowadays, when a person dies, for the most part, they don't know when their last day is on this earth, and tomorrow is not promised, is not guaranteed. So, remember the woman who was caught in adultery, who they were going to stone to death. The Lord forgave her, but he said something very key once he forgave her. And I encourage you to look it up in the scriptures. He forgave her of her adultery, and he told her, go and sin no more. Jesus Christ said, go and sin no more. 
there was a blind man who he healed and he told this person go and sin no more least a worse thing come upon you we see here how a person it's appointed unto men to die once everyone has this this time it's an appointed time everyone on this earth has a date with death when the flesh will die and then after that the judgment so my question is will you answer the wake-up call now we should all live as if it were our last day glorifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with everything every hour of every minute of every day living as if it were our last seeking the righteousness of Christ that we don't get caught off guard three more pieces of scriptures I wanted to go through second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 says but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up think about this the Lord will come as a thief in the night well, look at the wording a thief in the night how do thieves operate for the most part they operate under the cover and the guise of night why because they're very sneaky they don't want to be heard and a thief does not want to make any kind of announcement they want to be swift and not get caught so this is the imagery that we have here he's gonna come as a thief in the night which means people are not gonna know so may we be in good standing and in right standing with the Most High God there is a similar scripture in the book in first Thessalonians I'm gonna blow this up let me make this bigger a little bit there we go first Thessalonians chapter 5 and beginning at verse 1 but of the times and the season brethren ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that the day shall not overtake you as a thief hmm interesting book of James I was talking about confessing your sins before requesting prayer if you have incurred in sin be honest with your fellow brother and sister and I wanted to explain a little bit of this verse the book of James chapter 5 and verse 16 says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much so you see here confess your faults right if you have to confess it that means that is not very apparent at times at times the sins are buried in the heart at times these sins occur behind closed doors so is asking to confess your sins confess your faults sometimes it's apparent a, a person's fault is apparent is is very visible but at times it is not it says to confess it and pray for one another so this scripture is a command to the church why because it's asking us to pray for one another concerning the matter that the person may receive healing and that the fervent prayer of the righteous will avail much much what much problems see as we were saying if a if a person incurs in fornication let's say and now this person had a horrendous car accident 
right? Where they lucky to be alive, but not lucky, wrong word, blessed to be alive. So if the person, is, the believer is blessed to be alive, see, and the believer comes and says, hey, I got into a car accident, pray for me. However, I engaged in fornication, and I think this may be part of the result of the judgment, of the correction, and I open the door to the enemy. See, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man, what's it going to do? It's going to avail much. But this believer kept his integrity. This believer confessed what he did. Not the other way around, the deceitful believer who says, man, I got into a car accident. I don't know what happened. Well, did you, 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 you forgot to mention that you masturbated last night, three days ago. You forgot to mention that. And you want prayer now? This is why it's important for us to be honest with one another. And this confession of one another goes to a believer. It does not go to those that are in the world. You are not to confess your sins to those who are in the world. Because look what it says. And pray for one another. Those who are in the world, they don't know God. They don't pray to God. They have their own God in their own hearts. They're not walking in obedience to him. So why would you confess your sins to a person that's not in God? As a matter of fact, I advise you right now. That is very unwise. Do not give the enemy any information because what can happen is the enemy can use that information against you, especially these last days. Any information you have, any fault, any sin, you should not go to Egypt for advice, for prayer, for nothing. You should go to a believer. So you don't go to Egypt. You go to Israel. You go to the spiritual Israel. Who is the spiritual Israel? A fellow believer. Why do I say spiritual Israel? Because the Bible says one is one, one is a Jew, not one who is a Jew inwardly, but not one who is a Jew outwardly, but inwardly with the circumcision of the heart. So those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ through faith, they are inheritors of the promises made to Abraham because they have the circumcision of the heart. Those are the ones who you go to. You go to Israel for help, to your brother and your sister. You don't go to Egypt for help because you're going to arm Egypt with a bunch of information to use against you. And that's not one of the things that you want to do this last hour. So we're going to do a quick recap. Here's the recap. Setting the alarm, getting the wake up call. Perceive the things that are happening in your life. Everything that's going on, ask yourself why. And ask the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can give you the correct answer. Why are you going through what you're going through? Is it a test? Is it trials and tribulation for the name of Jesus? Because if you are being persecuted for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, blessed are ye. So count it as a blessing. That you are being persecuted for the name of the Lord. However, if you are being persecuted, reprimanded for wrongdoing, there's no glory there. You are to repent if you did wrong. And don't be a hypocrite and don't be deceitful because being deceitful comes from the enemy. Meaning, if you are occurring in willful sin, chewing your tobacco, smoking your cigarettes, don't be asking for prayer. Just be honest. Be honest. Be sincere. Quit and put away that thing. Cry out to the Most High God. Come to your brothers and sisters and confess your sin. And then ask for prayer. And that right there demonstrates great integrity. And remember, we're to walk in the spirit of meekness and humility. There is no humility in hiding things, but painting yourself to be a saint walking in holiness that has done nothing wrong and needs prayer when you incurred in sin a couple of days ago, hours ago, minutes ago. That's not cool. That's not right. Think logically. So 
the Lord brings things upon people as a wake-up call that you may get up out of the bed. And my advice to you is do not force the hand of the Lord to kick you out of bed, to be smitten out of bed. Now, that word smitten, right, which is basically to smack or hit very hard, harshly, I encourage you to read the book of Acts. Peter was in the jail and the Lord sent an angel and that angel, he smote Peter. He smacked him out of sleep. He didn't caress him out of sleep. You know why? Because the ninth caress, hey, Peter, please wake up. That's not going to work. He needed him to get up. ASAP as soon as possible. So what did he do? He smote he smoked Peter. He smacked him really hard, probably open handed, and more than likely the angel's hand is really big, the size of probably his torso. Give him a big whack. And guess what? Peter woke up immediately out of sleep. So I say, look what's going on around you. That you may wake up immediately out of sleep on your own that the first time you get smoked you wake up don't ask for these greater things or force the hand of the lord to force him to wake you up in a drastic manner i say whatever is required to get the person to wake up to believe in the Lord, to walk in his righteousness, that the person may be blameless before the Most High God. So, I do hope and encourage you to read the scripture. And I'm going to give you the biblical reference as to what I'm talking about and where to find it in the book of Acts. And I encourage you, please, to go and read the scripture. Don't take my word. Everything you hear, take it to the Lord from anyone Take it to the Lord and confirm what is being said. So I encourage you to read the book of Acts chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. I repeat, book of Acts chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. And I pray that you're encouraged to read the whole chapter. Glory be to Christ. So, just uh, one last thing to tell you. First off, if you're a believer that incurred in sin... And you're asking for prayers without even telling people the full story. Shame on you. Don't do that. Repent. Truly. And you, if you are the believer that someone is coming to you asking for prayer, ask that believer, hey, have you, I'm not accusing you, but I'm asking you, have you sinned lately? Have you masturbated? Have you watched pornea? Are you smoking? Are you drinking? Is there anything that you have? Have you lied to anyone lately? Are you entertaining lustful thoughts and you're married? Because the Bible says he who lusts after a woman is guilty of committing the act. Engage the person. Assess the situation. Look at what's going on. And then advise that person to repent first. Oh yeah, I'll pray for you. I pray that greater things come upon your life to cause you to repent. You see? That the person may truly start walking with the Lord in repentance. So, I hope and pray that this message has blessed you. Until next time, may the Lord keep us. In Jesus' name.